Couch, dog, me, palaces. Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle lesson right here on Lickin' Riff and in this video you're in for a real treat because we're gonna explore fingerstyle walking bass. Yep, I'm gonna teach you advanced walking bass where you play the chords and move the bass line around, um, jazz style. So uh, we're gonna start with exploring options and understanding the technique and the concept behind the thing, behind the walking bass uh, fingerstyle technique. And we're gonna base it around the autumn leaves chords, uh, just like I did in the autumn leaves lesson years ago. And then I'm gonna show you how you can connect any jazzy chord to any jazzy chord by adding a bass line, basically. So uh, it's something like this. trying to give you as many approaches as possible. Now, the idea here is that you have approach notes, and approach notes are basically chromatic notes. Just, okay? And let's go over the chords first. Uh, you have A minor seven, it's five, five, five on strings three, four, and six. Then you have D7, you have 5, 4, 5 on strings, 3, 4, and 5. You have G major 7, okay? It's 4, 2, and 3 on strings, 3, 4, and 6. Or you can do a G7, okay? 4, 3, and 3 on the same string. Um, you can do C major 7 or C7, if you like. Um, it's uh, 4, 2, 3 on strings, 3, 4, and 5 or three, two, three, okay? Then you have F, uh, it looks like F sharp minor seven, but it's technically F sharp half diminished just without this sound. So you can call it either way. It's two, two, and two on strings, three, four, and six. And you have B seven, two, one, two on strings, three, four, five, and E minor, okay? I'm playing the bass string. And then you can do uh, F sharp uh, minor seven again. Then you can do this. Um, I'm doing this, okay? Because this uh, this gives me a bass line. Uh, so let's get this out of the way. It's um, on strings three, four, and six. We have three, two, and three. Okay. You can call it J diminished, and then it's this. It's four, two, and four on strings three, four, and six. And then you're back to the beginning. So again, right? Then you have four sevens instead of major sevens. And then you have this, A7. Now the last step before we start playing walking bass uh, is to know that you have two ways of playing the chords. You can play okay, bass and then the rest of the chord. And you can play the whole chord as a block. Okay? It's a given, but it's important to acknowledge that. Now walking bass, you can come from below or from above. Okay? And playing, you know, you have five on the sixth string for A, so three, four, five. Okay, and then the chord, or... And you can do it with any chord. Okay. Now what did I do here? I played three, two for the F sharp chord, but I played the open string before that. 
right? Mode. That's also chromatic, but using a different uh, melodic styling. You can do okay, a full chromatic line and still have it. You can combine. You can come from below and then from above. Okay, you can do three four and then six five for A minor seven. You can also do three four and then seven five. Okay, to use a scale sound. You can do an exaggerated line. Okay? But if you put it uh, at the right spot rhythmically, it can work. See? Okay, I did it with D. So I did three, uh, three, four, and then seven, six, five. It all depends on your sense of rhythm. Again, you can do E A E G sharp E G. Okay, five four three. And you can combine all of those and just choose a different one for each chord, and then you just have uh, a walking bass line. You don't have to think of uh, the whole thing right off the bat. You can just, you know, let your fingers play what's comfortable at the moment. I uh, did zero two, I'm leading to C, zero two, and then I did five three. Okay, because this uh, leads me in a scaly sort of sound instead of uh, chromaticism all the time. You can break the chromaticism. Um, now, what I do <clears throat> at the ending there, okay, I do zero one two into B seven, and then, yeah, and then you can do. Three zero for E uh, for E minor or E minor seven if you want the open D string, um, but there's no uh, reason for that. You can just do E minor, and that kind of creates a bluesy motif just for a second there. Okay, and for the ending you can use the chords I showed you. Okay, and then you have. The, the same uh, the same idea chromaticism just with chords now you can also use the chords themselves okay as another approach so okay or you can end And just use the A minor seven shape, okay, on G sharp, then on seven, okay, four, seven, and then five. It's the same chord. I'm taking the A minor seven shape and moving it around. Now, that's chromatically. That's not chromatically, but you can add a chromaticism, okay, if it works for you in context. So. this you can do a breaky sort of thing um, I'll try to tie it all together I'll try to give as many examples as possible so I might fumble a little bit because I'll try to variate on purpose now what did I do here I did 3 2 okay and I did okay the 0 3 0 2 but I did, okay, I pulled off, I pulled off the three and then I played the open string again. Okay, again, it's a rhythmical approach. Uh, you can toy around with the rhythm, it doesn't have to be strict beats all the time. idea you can uh, play around with the chord because it's easy to move around because it's the same fret um, so that's the basic way to do it now I know that I'm saying basic and this is 
anything but basic, but it's the basic approach and the basic approach works best. And the more you get into it, the better you get at experimenting with it. Now, having said that, you can uh, connect any chord to any chord. And if you add walking bass moves, then if, even if you do random chords, then it would sound nice. For example, if you have, you know, a 2-5-1 move. Right? Um, e, half diminished. Um, it's 8-7-8-7 uh, eight, seven, eight, seven on strings 2-5. to five. And then A augmented or flat 13, which is uh, uh, 6, 6, 5, 5 on strings 2, 3, 4, and 6. And then um, just a D minor add 9 chord, um, or D minor 9, uh, which is 5, 5, 3, 5 on strings 2, 5. Okay, so. Can you think of ways to connect the bass notes? Yeah, I'm using the open string. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, and then... Same thing, just a very basic approach at first to hear how it sounds. Okay, or... Yeah, you can do... You can have the chord because it's your first finger. Okay, you can play the chord after each one. And then you can just do an embellishment or okay, the simplest way. Just one fret away. I'm still on autumn leaves in my mind, sorry. So I'll take another uh, example. I'll take... Okay, just um, a normal um, six, two, five, one uh, cycle. Okay. So it's C7, A7, D7, and G7. Okay, it doesn't matter whether you know what the cycle is. Uh, it's the circle fifth th uh, thing, just one chord leading into another. And since all of them are seventh chords, all of them become dominants for the next chord leading into one another endlessly. So uh, C7 is 9, 8, 8 on strings 3, 4, and 6. Then you have the same on 5. Okay, 6, 5, 5 for A7, and then D7, just like before, and G7, like C7 and A7, just on 3 on bass, so it's 4, 3, 3. So, okay, now, if you want to connect it a little more musically, you can do this, okay, C9. Instead of uh, 9 on the 3rd string for C, you can do... Seven and then it's seven eight eight, and then you get this. You get a chromaticism on the high note. Okay, again the chromaticism. It's a motif. So okay, you can do the chromatic approach on the bass. Okay, and then you can do the C seven here then go back to A7 here. So, okay, you can play the chord along with the bass note. That's another rhythmic pattern. Okay, nobody says that you can't play the same note twice. Okay, C sharp D and then D. I played uh, four, five, seven, five. So, um, okay, and you can use the A7 here. You can do the chromaticism uh, between this C note and this A note. Just uh, learn to anticipate the next chord and where your final note is and then you can just work around it. Uh, sorry. Okay, so. 
5 just because it's a new idea to explore and see what I get right, and you can play around and just push the chords um, you know around the neck and then end on the next chord and that might create really surprising connections. Now if you're new to jazz style sounds and chords then I suggest uh, you focus on autumn leaves because that's just a very big cycle of fifths of dom dominance leading to one another um, and you can try if you really want to you can try to explore it from a high point on the neck and then you have If you like, it's um, a seventh chord with the bass on the sixth string, then a seventh chord below it, and then you just continue. Okay, two frets away every time. So you have it on nine. like in autumn leaves but then you have it on one okay so you can go back to nine if you like afterwards um, hey I don't want to overburden you with uh, with sounds and concepts I want to focus on bass you know walking bass methods only so I think I gave you more than enough ideas to explore. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.